Hi guys, I've got a quick 10 minutes and I want to do a quick video on credit cards. Thank you so much for joining. My name is Fifi and this is my journey to financial freedom. Please like, comment, subscribe, 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 subscribe. So in a previous video, I mentioned there's always good debt and bad debt. And so today I want to talk about credit cards. Guys, there's always a little bit, I, I get asked often about what I think about credit cards and I'm always like, yeah, but this and that. So I thought I'd do a video um, to, to explain my views on credit cards, especially in the current situation. So in an earlier video, I talked about good debt and bad debt. Good debt is generally used by cash generating assets. So where the rate of borrow borrowing is less than the expected return that you have with a margin of safety, of course. Credit card debt, which is carried from one month to another, is bad debt. I'm not gonna lie, just avoid it. <laughs> Having said that, credit cards do have a few pros. And I use credit cards as well. There are multiple reasons I use credit cards. Firstly, I have a budget which is based on the cash that I have. So if I say I'm going to spend, I don't know, 500 pounds on my personal allowance this month, then I'll spend as much of that on my credit card, but knowing that I have that 500 pounds in order to, 500 pounds cash in order to pay off my credit card at the end of the month. As a follow up point, I pay off my credit card every month so that I don't generate any interest on it in the first place. Thirdly, credit cards provide protection on purchases and protect you from fraudulent transactions. So for example, if you know your card has somehow been cloned and it's been used on a, and there's a transaction on there that you don't recognize, um, you can completely call up your credit card company and they don't expect you to take on the burden of that transaction. They will do the whole investigation for you. You know, if there's a company that have taken some money out of your credit card and you didn't authorize that payment, say maybe it's an annually recurring fee or you've bought insurance and something the next year they've automatically taken that amount from your credit card you can call up your credit card company and they will refund you that amount and they will um, create a dispute with the company that's actually um, taken the money from there so it provides you lots of um, positives from that perspective and also um, protects you from you know all those purchases that you may not have authorized and the final reason i use credit cards is for travel hacking and um, for say flights and other bonuses that you get um with your credit card so that was the good so now let's talk about the bad and the evil when it comes to credit cards for the purpose of this video i just did a quick google search and i found the lowest interest rates on credit cards are between 28 percent and 35 percent that's a lot when you think about it and you can go check that on money.co.uk as well the interest is so much higher than any other loans so for example when you compare it to mortgages or general loans or in other types of lending credit cards have the highest rates of interest out there and if you do get stuck into this ongoing cycle of just taking out credit cards spending on your credit card not being able to pay the full balance it can get really difficult to manage and even if you're paying the minimum payment it can take years to pay back the original balance the minimum payment amount on your little credit card statement is there to maximize the returns for the banks and it is not there to help you trust me so i always talk about compounding because that's another thing that gets me really excited um, and that can work for you when you invest credit cards are one of the few instances where compounding can actually work against you so there's a particular rule of thumb calculation called the power of 72 and it's a simple way to determine how long it will take for an investment to double given a set interest rate. 72 divided by the actual interest rate, the fixed interest rate, is equal to the number of years it will take for your loan to double or for your investment to double. So 72 divided by 20% which is that the average interest rate at the moment is equal to 3.6 so it will take you three and a half every three and a half years the money you borrow will double. So just imagine the money that you have in savings accounts at such a low interest rate will take a lifetime to double if you just left it in there. There's nothing there. So the key is always pay credit cards off with as much as you can because that will decrease the amount that you have left to pay on your balance and will decrease the amount of time it will take for your loan to actually double as well. The final reason I think credit cards are really bad debt is because they don't generate a return compared to mortgage debt, which is good because it buys you a house, you get rental income, you know, maybe you, you have asset growth or savings where interest is less than is less than the actual rent, rent paid. So think about it, what do you actually buy with your credit card? Clothes, gadgets, consumables, food, drinks, other things like petrol. It's probably wise not to use credit cards um, for things that go down in value and use them more like a tool. But what about this current situation? How do you pay down your credit card in a lockdown situation? So here's a statistic for you. As of early June, 15 million people have taken advantage of the payment um, holiday on credit cards. 
while it is a valuable lifeline, bear in mind that it's not free and there are cheaper alternatives. So let's say you owe a debt of 4K on your credit card. Um, the average amount that people in the UK owe on credit cards is around £2,600. So let's just keep the numbers rounded. Um, according to the moneycharity.org.uk, the average credit card debt is around £2,600 in the UK. Um, with an interest rate of about 19.9% and APR of 21.9%. Uh, so after a three month payment holiday, you will owe £203 based on those numbers. That's a lot of money, you know. That just goes to show those payment holidays should really be used as a lifeline and for people who really do need them. Because you still have to pay that £203 interest eventually. Similarly, there are payment holidays on mortgages and other loans, but their interest rates are lower and last over a longer period of time, so you don't see the effect as much or as quickly. So the best way to go is to eliminate that £203 at the outset. But how is the question? So doing a quick search online, um, there are deals out there on the high street. Lloyd's TSB currently do a 0% credit card with a 2.95% um, transfer fee. So going back to our original example of having that 4K debt, that will cost you £118 in order to um, transfer that original borrowed amount to um, the Lloyds card. So suddenly you're not paying £203, you're only paying £118 for your debt and you've also um, extended the amount of time, the interest-free period for you to pay that loan back. Day also provide a 0% transfer, 0% interest um, credit card deal at the moment. Um, all they ask is that you make 1% payment of your actual debt um, every month. So based on our £4,000 example, you just need to pay £40 that month and suddenly you're saving a whole bunch of money again. Having said all that, the FCA have made it quite clear that anyone with a credit card, mortgage, any other loan, any any kind of debt really, even if it's under a promotional period, can ask for a payment holiday um, in these current circumstances without being penalised. So if you know your circumstances better than anyone, if you do need to take advantage of that, then go ahead and do it. But know that there are always other options when it comes to credit cards. But what happens after your promotional period anyway? Um, so now we all know that Say you do sign up for, I don't know, the Santander 0% um, interest card for the next 18, 18 months, what happens? Well, the bank's accounting on you to kind of just be lazy and not really think about when your promotional period ends. And that's why they provide these juicy offers in the first place, because the interest swoops up to like to 19 and 20% at the end of the promotional period. So even if it's for a few months or you're being lazy or six months, by the time you actually think or get around to doing another credit card application for another 0% interest if you haven't paid that debt back, that's what they count on. They count on us being lazy. So guys, pull your fingers out. Um, remember, put a note on your calendar. Remember when your promotional periods end, if you are going to take advantage of these credit cards. Um, and make sure you switch or find another deal or find another efficient way um, in order to transfer your balance. But try and avoid that in a way because you're going to be trying to pay off as much as you can um, off your debt at the outset. Oral is pay off as much of your debt as possible and the remaining balance at the end of the period, promotional period, transfer it to another 0% card. Okay, so I hope that's good information for you guys out there. Um, it's kind of scary because of the current situation out there, people are struggling. Um, so, but know that there are always more efficient ways to manage your debt if you want to. Um, but until next time, please like, comment, subscribe um, down there. And yeah, that's about it. So until next time, cheers guys, bye.